I am constantly saying to my own party, Labour Party, which will probably win this election, you've got to focus on this technology revolution. Yeah. It's it's not a it's not an afterthought. It's the single biggest thing that's happening in the world today of a real world nature that is going to change everything. Leave aside all the geopolitics and the conflicts and war and America, China, all the rest of it. This revolution is going to change everything about our society, our economy, our, the way we live, the way we interact with each other. So if you take this you know, AI revolution, and I, I think we're living through a period of massive change, right? This is the biggest technological change since the Industrial Revolution, for sure. For, for political leaders today to understand that, to work out what the right policy is, to access the opportunities, mitigate the risks, uh, regulate it, this is really difficult work. And so what happens a lot of the time is that people are elected on the basis they are change makers because they've articulated a general vision for change. But when you then come to, okay, what does that really mean in specific terms? That's where the hard work hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that hard work and really dig deep, then you, you you know what you end up with, as I say, are just their ambitions, and they just remain ambitions. You you talk about improving public services with AI, but when you look at the IT revolution and how much it's improved, let's say market services versus how much it's improved public sector services, there's clearly been a big difference. Should it would it if you go back to IT, would it have just been better to privatize the things that IT could have enabled more of, like education? And what lessons does that have for AI? Where should we just you know the public sector didn't seem that good at integrating IT? Maybe we'll be bad at integrating AI. Let's just privatize healthcare education as much as possible because all the productivity gains will come from the private sector in those things, anyways. Yeah, no, it's a great question, and it's the single most difficult thing because you you can't just hand everything over to the private sector because in the end the public will expect the public interest to be taken account of by government. Right? And, you know, you may say, well, government's useless at protecting <laughs> the public interest. That's another matter. But people were, people, no, people on the whole, people in America, people in the UK, they're not going to say, okay, just hand it over to these tech giants and let them run everything. However, I do think what, what should happen, and we have a whole program in my institute now, which we call the Reimagined State, Right, and I think if you look at, there was a minimalist state in the 18th century and in the first part of the 19th century that grew in the last part of the 19th century and first part mm. of the 20th century into a maximalist state, right, where you look for, for government to do a lot of things yeah. for you and the state grows large. I think we should reimagine the state today as a result of this technology mm. revolution and make it much more strategic it's much more about setting a framework and then allowing much more diversity, competition. And the hardest thing about the public sector in those circumstances is to create self-perpetuating innovation. You know, if, if, you, if you don't innovate in the private sector, you go out of business, right? If you don't innovate in the public sector, I mean, you're still there, right? It's just the service has got worse. Yeah. And so, this is the really tough intellectual task. How do you, for example, in education today, I mean, how many kids in America are actually, you'll have a significant tail of kids that taught really badly, right? Okay, same probably in any Western country. No one today should be taught badly, right? Everyone should be taught, by the way, also on an individual basis, on a personalized basis. And if you look at, if you look, take what, because uh, we work with them, what Sal Khan's doing, for example, with the Khan Academy, uh, and there are other people doing great things in education using technology. We should be able to create a situation in which young people today are able to learn at the pace that, that, that is good for them. And no young person should be without opportunity. But how you reform the system to allow that to happen, that's the, that's the big challenge. Yeah. But, you know, in time, and like with the healthcare system, you know, you will end up with an AI doctor, you'll end up with an AI tutor. The question will be, what's the framework within which those things operate? And how do we, how do we use them to allow a better service and probably to allow a lot of the people within the healthcare or education systems to concentrate on the most important part of their mm. learning rather than, for example, if you're a doctor having to write up a whole lot of notes after a consultation or do lesson planning if you're a teacher.